right, so I've had this piece in storage now for a couple of months and it's completely dry. So I'll show you how to dry. I meant to trim a dry piece. <coughs> I'm gonna wet the edges just a little bit. I first get in this room I call from clay dust, I'm sure. <coughs> Got a nice storm going on. So the reason I spray the edges is so that when I put the clay on the rim that holds it, um, <clears throat> it'll stick. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to talk and do stuff, but I'll get used to it. Okay, so I'm going to just spray the edge. You see it's drinking up the water. Very porous. I save all my little hair product bottles. Save everything. Not to the point of being a hoarder. But if it can be used in here, you better believe I'm going to keep it. Wish I had some music for you, but you know, all the copyright laws, I don't want to infringe on any. But... So I'm going to turn this guy upside down. That's a little bit more wet than I need it. Um, let's find a dry sponge. I love this guy. I bought some new sponges today. That'll be better for wiping down my wheel head. So I'm going to gently turn this guy. These rings on the wheel head here, they help to guide you for trimming. And I thought that was very friendly. So I'm going to spray it just a little bit more. Turn my wheel on here. And let's hope I don't start breaking away at the lip. Now, this guy looks nice and scented already. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so again, we'll do that trimming technique where we use a pencil or pointed, a dully pointed object. You don't want a sharp object because... It'll cut right into it. The needle tool is way too sharp for this technique. That's why I keep plenty of pencils in here. All right, so I'm looking at the rings. It looks a little uneven right here. If it's nice and centered, it should center back easily. So let's see. Hold your hand steady, self-control. I'm gonna go a little slow to see where it doesn't touch. So right there, it doesn't touch as deeply as the others. So as the other side. So I'm gonna slide it back towards me just a tad and just find one spot. Okay, hear that noise? That's where it's not touching. So I'm gonna slide it back to me some more. It's hard to get this perfectly centered, but you should try. All right, I think, nope. I think we're good. That same spot needs to come towards me just a little bit more, but it's over there. So let's try this. It's important to hold the pencil straight and steady and don't try to force it to touch. So none of it's touching. <laughs> Slide up a little. It didn't touch here. I think that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more quick little spray. But you wanna be careful not to wet the wheel head too much because the clay will stick to it too much. So I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe up. All right. Gonna make my little coils to go here on the edges to <clears throat> secure this guy. Usually three pieces is enough. Um, it's up to you. There you go. We got a nice storm, perfect day for throwing on the wheel because it brings a little sunshine in. In my life, anyway, I don't know about yours. So I'm going to get a kind of sharp tool because this is a um, 
dry piece, okay? Sorry, when I talk and do this, I get very distracted. You'll hear me say that a lot. I think I'm going to try a sharp, even sharper tool um, because I don't want to... not take off enough and have ridges okay okay so when you trim um a dry piece it just lets out powder and this powder is very valuable um in filling up s cracks if say i had formed a, a little tiny crack here this dry dust will help fill that in and you notice i can't trim a lot and i can't use too much pressure because this guy's already trying to wobble I just want it, it's nice and thin. So I just want to shake this foot. I don't really want to um, alter it too much. I'll work with what I have. It's like life. Got parts of you you don't like, work what you got. All right. I like a piece with a nice heavy bottom because um, I always try to give something with a little grip. The piece with a nice heavy bottom means it will sit nice and stable on the table. Not too heavy, just a little bit heavier than everything else. All right. I feel debris in there. I'm using recycled clay that's been in storage for a while. I just kept it on water until all the water absorbed, and I was just left with some nice ready-to-throw clay ready to use, wasn't it, had to uh, wedge it. So I'm gonna go here, just take a little bit off the bottom, not a lot. Just enough to flatten this edge. And really you wanna have on a mask with this dust. Um, especially if you have allergies or lung problems, cause it can make you coffee, make you coffee. <laughs> Make you cough a little bit for a couple of days if you don't. All right, let's have a look. I think that's about all I want to take off that guy. Because like I said, you risk it uh, wanting to fly off because it's so dry. When it's this uh, dry, it'll tend to drink the water out of the clay in your coil that you made. makes all kinds of cool noises and it's getting powder all over my foot okay i just want to make sure this guy doesn't rock when it stands so you got to make sure that the base is uh cut deeper or trimmed deeper than the foot this is the foot and this is the base sounds really nice i want to get off a little bit more you notice I sped the wheel up here. Can't put too much pressure because I don't want to go flying. I'll be upset with myself. But I felt a little heel right here, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And people say, how do you know when it's thin enough? Thin enough. And I'm like, you're, when you're a potter, you just can feel it. And you can hear that nice hollow sound high pitch sound that we um, have grown to know as potters. And artists are very sensitive to size and measurement. Um, we're pretty good with that. After you've been doing this a while, some things are just second nature. All right. Okay, here we go. Now, I probably can't carve into that and put my name on it. Um, so what I'll usually do is just get some, when I'm completely done, I'll get some black underglaze and sign it like that. Okay, so you see all that white powder? Okay, I'm gonna just wipe this guy down so I can have a look at it. Get some of this clay dust off here. And I'll wet it a little. 
and when it's this dry, you know you can't attach a handle, okay? So when I'm done with this, I'm gonna go into time-lapse and I'll uh, paint it. I went to Hobby Lobby today. I love going out there looking at all the pottery that they have. And I know it's manufactured by machines and technology, but they sure do have some pretty designs. And I like, and I'm really inspired by some of the color themes. So um, that's what I go to art stores and I look at all the pretty things. I don't like copying people's ideas, but I will borrow their color themes in a heartbeat. I saw some strawberry theme work. I didn't like, you know, not that I don't like, but I, I don't want to do strawberries, not my thing, but I sure did love that rich red. So today I've had red on my mind. I even bought a red apron. Usually I have blue on my mind. Artists go through color phases. Picasso went through his blue phase. All right. So these guys are hard to pick up the bowl sometimes. So that's nicely trimmed and it's got a great weight to it, a great feel. For a bowl like this, I'd probably use it to store fruit. Um, sometimes, you know, when you got growing boys or when you have men at home, I don't have any boys anymore, just my grandbabies, but they like big bowls of anything. How they keep their weight down like that, I don't know. But they sure have some healthy appetite. All right, I'm gonna clean this dust up from here just so it's not in the way. These are bat pins, they hold the bats that I used to throw. All right, so I'm gonna turn this video off now and go into hyper, into time-lapse and put some color on this bowl.